Good morning, everyone. We are continuing Merging with Shiva, Chapter 38. Powers of the Spine, drawn from the 1967 Master Course, as well as 1970. Lesson 262, Withdrawing into Sushumna. When we chant the mantra Om and do it correctly, we pronounce the Ah so that it vibrates the physical body. The U has to vibrate through the throat area and the M the head. In doing this, we are deliberately moving awareness out of the Muladhara and Swadhisthana chakras, first two, deliberately harmonizing all the forces of the instinct and physical body and of the Ida and Pingala currents. Chanting the Ah and the U and the M mm brings the Shushumna into power. We are transmuting and changing the flows of all the energies through the physical and astral body and blending them as much as possible into the body of the soul. The mantra om can be chanted at any time. It can be chanted silently and cause the same vibration through the body. When you chant om, the ida and the pingala blend back into the shushumna. You will actually see this happening. You will see the pink ida current begin to blend into the golden center of the spine. At other times, it is seen winding through the body. The same happens with the pingala force. It too moves back into the spine until you are all spine when you are centered in the sushumna. This is how it feels, like being all spine. This beautiful pure energy flows out through the sushumna and the ida and the pingala and then out through the body. This energy becomes changed as it flows through the first three or four chakras. It makes what is called prana. This energy runs in and through the body. It is a great mind energy which is in the world of thought. All the stratums of thought are prana. The human aura is prana. Prana, or odic force, is transferred from one person to another through touch, as in a handshake or through a look. It is the basic force of the universe and the most predominant force found within the body. You have to really study prana to get a good understanding of what it is. It runs in and through the skin, through the bone structure, and through the physical body and around the body. Breath controls prana. This practice is called pranayama. It is the control of prana, the regulation of prana, or the withdrawal of prana from the external world back to its primal source. This is why pranayama is so important to practice systematically, regularly, day after day, so we get all the prana into a rhythm. In this way, we get a rhythm of the pure life force flowing through the ida pingala and sushumna and out through the aura. We gain a rhythm of awareness soaring inward into refined states of the ajna and sarasvara chakra, the perspective areas from which we are looking out at life as if we were the center of the universe. This is how we feel when we are in these chakras. Then we get the related shum words. Kashum, second dimensional word. Guha, the cave-like chamber where Swami's yogis and sadhakas meditate, study, and sleep. Nikashum, the art of withdrawing the energy into the spine through the use of pranayama. 
names the process of drawing the magnetic energy from the subtle nerve fibers, nadis, which surround the body into the spine. When a devotee enters meditation, the energy is drawn from the conscious mind into its subconscious. Then the energy of the subconscious is drawn into the sub-superconscious. When this happens, the devotee becomes conscious in the inner states of mind. Then we get the next deeper level, shum nikashum. Feeling the psychic heat while withdrawing prana into the ajna chakra. Bishum nikashum. Withdrawing prana into the refined realms of the Sarasvara chakra through the use of pranayama, an advanced stage of prachahara. Two more to go. <laughs> I bishum nikashum. Withdrawing all odic prana into the actinic energy. Hi, I bishum nikashum. Withdrawing the actinic prana into the self the ultimate prachahara. Quite a series to think about. Back to the Merging with Shiva text. Diaphragmatic breathing is breathing according to nature. When man becomes confused, nervous, tense, fearful, he breathes out of tune with nature, out of tune with himself. Then his breathing is spasmodic, labored, shallow, and he has to expand his chest to get enough breath to keep going on. That's right. Breathing by expanding the chest is incorrect. Unnatural and conducive to nothing but ill health unless you are practicing an advanced breathing exercise. And then the chest is only expanded after the area beneath the chest is filled. And unless you are doing physically strenuous work, you will be able to bring more than sufficient air into your lungs by the simple, natural contraction and relaxation of the diaphragmatic muscle. The diaphragm you can feel right below your solar plexus in the area where the floating ribs separate. Place your fingertips on top of the diaphragm and cough. If your fingers are directly on top of the diaphragm, you will feel them jump out away from you as you cough. The quickest way to teach yourself natural breathing, the way you breathe until about the age of seven, is to lie on the floor with your spine absolutely straight. Place a book or some light object on top of your diaphragm. When you breathe in, the diaphragm will extend itself downward in the body and you will feel it push out and up away from the floor. Watch the book rise. Breathing out is as important as breathing in without expelling all the waste matter and carbon dioxide from the lungs. They are not free to take in more fresh oxygen. <clears throat> as you exhale, the diaphragm relaxes slowly, smoothly, and completely. The book, which previously was lifted away from the floor by the pressure of your expanding diaphragm, now returns back to its starting position. You will find that squeezing or contracting the abdominal muscles slightly will aid you in making a complete exhalation, allowing most of the air to leave the lungs. At the end of your exhaled breath, your stomach should be flat and the diaphragm relaxed, ready for the next inhalation. You are now on your way to perfect breath, and mind control. Then we get the Shum series. This one is not as profound as the last one. Vasi. Prana, odic energy. Name of energy sent into the 36 parts of the physical body. Divasi. Feeling the odic prana congested or smoothly flowing in all 36 parts of the body working with congested areas so that the actinic prana can penetrate them. Calm divasi, the action of pulling all the 36 forces of odic pranas together. 
Being in a state of calm divasi is like picking up a piece of cloth by grabbing it in the middle. All four ends come up at the same time. The calm divasi, sif malia mambashum, must be mastered. Once mastered, meditations will be scintillating and delightful. Practice to master this technique and soon the atomic structure of your being will come to attention. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.